There are two big challenges when it comes to the art of efficient packing, optimizing space and staying organized. Most of the time you need to choose which of these two things is more important to you. Rarely, very rarely, you will find a packing tool that does both beautifully. Packing cubes can sometimes be that tool. And believe it or not, this varies not only from traveler to traveler, but also from trip to trip. On some trips, I use packing cubes. On others, I don't. And the type of packing cube that I use often varies as well. Today, I am going deep with this packing cube comparison and review video. I'll lay out all the packing cubes benefits and drawbacks, and then I'll walk you through some of the top packing cubes on the market right now. In so doing, I'll illustrate how to choose the best packing cubes for your next trip in this head-to-head -head packing cubes comparison. And stick around to learn why I think this one is the best and worst of them all. Let's do this. So why would you use packing cubes to begin with? They may or may not actually help you save space in your luggage. I have another episode about packing cubes versus rolling where I did a side-by-side -side experiment packing the exact same stuff into my luggage twice, once with compression packing cubes and once just by rolling and putting my stuff directly into my luggage. I was actually surprised at the results. I expected rolling my clothes to come out way further ahead in the space saving department. You can watch the video to see what happened, but the spoiler alert is the results were more similar than I thought. But that still doesn't mean that one or the other strategies were clear winners. There are a lot of factors that go into packing for an upcoming trip. For example, the size of your luggage makes a big difference. If you're checking a bag, you don't have to be quite as careful about weight restrictions as you would if you were traveling with carry-on luggage only, where every single gram is precious, right down to the weight of your packing cubes. Though, Admittedly, while some travelers seem concerned about this, the weight of packing cubes really, to me, is negligible. The important thing for somebody traveling with checked luggage is organization. You will inherently bring a lot more stuff with you when you have a checked size bag, which makes it all the more important to have a system for organizing all of your stuff. Packing cubes are super helpful with that. That said, I mostly travel with carry-on luggage only, and I almost always use packing cubes. My specific selection of packing cubes is what varies from trip to trip and I will get more into those strategies throughout the course of this video. But first, let's just lay out some of the basic benefits of using packing cubes for travel. Not to be underestimated is the power of organization. Packing cubes can be used to organize clothes, accessories, and even toiletries so that everything has its place and it's easily identifiable and accessible. And no matter how meticulous you are about your luggage, chances are the inside is gonna get dirty over time. Packing cubes can help you keep the contents therein clean. And if you have a liquid mishap in your luggage, packing cubes will prevent whatever's inside from becoming contaminated. Last, at your destination, the clothing drawers or shelves at your accommodation may not be as clean as you'd like. By keeping your clothes in their packing cubes, you just made unpacking a breeze. And you're protecting your clothes against any ickies in the drawers. Something people don't talk about is how packing cubes are a lifesaver during security checks or customs inspections. Picture this, you're traveling with carry-on luggage. And when your bag goes through the x-ray, it gets flagged for secondary inspection. The airport security officer then opens up your bag and has to rifle through all of your neatly rolled or folded clothes. All of it. Not only am I not interested in my underwear becoming a public affair, but then you have to refold and repack everything on the spot. Packing cubes help to avert this challenge. The space saving argument is debatable since not all packing cubes actually maximize luggage space. But one trick is to use packing cubes of different sizes. This allows you to put the smaller ones into the corners and other nooks around larger packing cubes. Compression packing cubes are the real trick to optimizing space. So let's get into this. There are two basic types of packing cubes, compression packing cubes and regular packing cubes or non-compression cubes. Regular packing cubes are simply rectangular or square shaped organizers made of sturdy fabric that un unzips on two or three sides. They're like mini suitcases. They come in different sizes and they're often sold as a set. They're designed to help you organize your stuff within your luggage. Compression packing cubes feature an additional zipper or straps that compress the air out of your clothes, creating additional space in your luggage. Generally speaking, I think compression packing cubes are the way to go, but they do have a few drawbacks. First of all, the extra zipper does add a little bit of weight to your packing cube, although again, in my opinion, it's pretty negligible. What does become a bit of a weight problem is that if you're compressing everything down into compression packing cubes and then filling your luggage to absolute capacity, you may find that your luggage is heavier than some airlines will allow, which is particularly problematic if you're traveling with carry-on luggage only. 
The other problem with compression packing cubes is that your clothes are much more likely to become <laughs> irrevocably wrinkled. It takes a little bit of finesse, but if you roll or fold your clothes really carefully, you can minimize the wrinkle factor. Here are some things to look out for when shopping for packing cubes. Take notes because I will refer to some of these factors when I go through the various packing cubes that I own in a little bit. I think the most important thing is high quality zippers because a broken zipper basically means a useless packing cube, especially if it's a compression packing cube. And the compression factor will inherently put more pressure on the zippers, which makes the zipper quality even more important. I also think a selection of different sizes of packing cubes is an important part of your overall packing strategy. Your packing cubes are never gonna fit absolutely perfectly into your luggage. And likewise, your stuff is never going to fit absolutely perfectly into the same size packing cubes. I personally choose a few different sizes of packing cubes for every single trip I'm on. And the packing cubes I choose depend on what I'm specifically packing for that trip. Now, because I use a bunch of different sizes and brands of packing cubes on each trip, I can identify which packing cube has what inside it just by looking at it. But in general, if you are just buying packing cubes from one company, as most people do, you'll have a bunch of identical packing cubes. So you can identify the contents of your packing cubes by either using different sizes of the same brand of packing cube or getting a packing cube that has a mesh top or window so you can see what's inside or choosing a packing cube like this one that allows you to actually write what you have on, on a card and stick it in the little window or even a little packing cube like this one that has numbers on it. It's also good to think about what you want to put inside the packing cube because that might affect your decision about whether you wanna buy something that has a breathable mesh window on top versus one that's more water resistant. The mesh window can keep the contents a little fresher and prevent your clothes from getting that mildewy smell over time. Conversely, if you wanna put dirty laundry into a packing cube, perhaps you'd rather contain the smell with a non-breathable packing cube. And while you're at it, you won't care if your dirty laundry gets wrinkled, so a compressible packing cube is even better. There are two more factors that tend to be the things that people think are the most important when it comes to choosing the best packing cubes, but I actually think they're the least important. Durability and weight. While it's good to have a durable packing cube to withstand the rigors of travel, the thing that really needs to be durable is the zipper more so than the material. Most packing cubes are made with super durable technical material like ripstop nylon or cordura. And in general, packing cubes really don't take that much abuse. The other thing that people go on and on about is weight. That was one of the prime excuses that many viewers of my rolling versus packing cubes video gave for not wanting to use packing cubes. But honestly, I don't get it. Packing cubes on their own take up almost no space or weight. If you really need to shave fractions of ounces or grams from your luggage weight, I suggest taking a closer look at what you're packing overall, rather than your selection of packing cubes. Overall, much more important to me than durability or weight is functionality, breathability, size, zippers, and compression. Lastly, before we get to the packing cube showdown, let's talk about a few strategies for how to use packing cubes effectively. First up is sorting your luggage contents accordingly. You can sort by clothing type, for example, putting all your pants in one packing cube and all your tops in another one and undies and socks in another one. Or you could sort by outfit, putting one or two days full outfits into each packing cube. You can sort by weather, if you're on a multi-climate trip, by putting cold weather gear in one cube and warm weather gear in another one. Next up is the ever-present roll versus fold debate. Folding your clothes carefully before putting them into the packing cube will minimize the wrinkles in transit. But if you plan to live out of your bag for a few days, for example, if you have layovers or if you plan to use your packing cubes to house your clothes at your destination, folding gets impractical. Accessing the t-shirt that's folded in the middle of a stack of all the t-shirts in the middle of your packing cube means a lot of shuffling of folded clothes and things are gonna get disheveled really quickly. By contrast, rolling your clothes before putting them into the packing cube makes it super easy to pull out whatever you need without disturbing anything else. And it's a less finicky way of putting stuff into packing cubes because you can just roll each item and just stuff it in and nothing's gonna move around. The flip side is, if your clothes are prone to wrinkling, rolling them might result in more creases and wrinkles than necessary. I've used both strategies and they each have advantages and disadvantages. It ultimately depends on your clothes and the packing cubes you're using and also the type of trip you're taking. I encourage you to experiment and find the best strategy for you. Here's a hot tip if you're using compression packing cubes. If you're not careful, the material of the packing cube can get caught in the zipper while you're compressing it down. 
The solution to this problem is to put your finger between the material and the zipper, just ahead of the zipper, and to use your knuckle to create space and keep the material from getting caught. It takes a little bit of practice, but it can become quite smooth once you do it a few times. It's also important to think outside the box when packing your cubes into your luggage. For some reason, most of us usually default to just putting packing cubes into our luggage flat, but you might find that packing them vertically is a better use of luggage space. For example, if you pack a large packing cube flat at the bottom of your case, you might not be making the best use of the space between the trolley handles within your luggage. And it could be a perfect fit if you stacked that packing cube vertically between or beside them. Along those lines, try using different sizes of packing cubes. I tend to lay out everything I'm packing for a trip and then I choose the packing cubes that I'm gonna take when I can see how much stuff I wanna organize into each cube and how big a cube I'll need for it. I have the luxury of having accumulated quite a collection of packing cubes over the years so I can test them for reviews like these. But if you're just starting out and looking for some good packing cubes to buy, I would suggest investing in one of the bundles that are available by some of these brands that give you a few different sizes of packing cubes. The reason for this is with different sizes of packing cubes, plus packing them creatively into your luggage, you're gonna make the best use of space. All right, let's get into the packing cube showdown. I'm gonna walk you through a bunch of packing cubes that I've personally used regularly in the last few years. First up, the best and the worst one of the bunch, and it is the Peak Design Compression Packing Cube. It's the worst because it's the most expensive of all the packing cubes I'm showing you today. I personally would not have considered investing in them at all if I hadn't have hung out with a travel companion who had some and absolutely raved about them. So I asked to see these magical packing cubes of theirs and I performed a critical inspection before realizing that they really do stand head and shoulders above any other packing cubes I've used. They are far and away the nicest packing cubes to feel and to touch, and they're made of this unique self-healing material that actually prevents small punctures and scratches. The tearaway zipper also makes it super smooth and easy to open when unpacking. Everything about it just feels lovely. Like everything made by Peak Design, they're thoughtfully designed and environmentally friendly. If Peak Design seems familiar to you, I featured their everyday tote pack in a couple of videos, and I raved about their mobile accessories ecosystem in my frequent flyer travel video. So here's what I love about these packing cubes. There are a few different sizes available, so you can get a bundle that will flex with your travels. This is their large size. The material feels super soft and really nice to the touch, and it's made of this self-healing nylon poly blend. And the shell is made of 100% recycled material, fair trade certified, carbon neutral, and has a lifetime guarantee. The tearaway zippers are totally unique to these packing cubes and they make it really easy and smooth to open. There's also an internal divider that helps you separate clean and dirty laundry, and they provide fantastic compression. That said, they're not perfect. They are expensive, and because of the tearaway zipper, they don't fully close, so they're not waterproof. Next up, I was actually ambivalent about the well-traveled deluxe compression packing cube set when I ordered them, but I must admit they're super handy. I love the big variety of sizes that come in the eight piece set. This is just one of many sizes. I can pick and choose which ones to take on each trip so everything fits perfectly together in my luggage. They also feel pretty nice to the touch and the material is very durable and water resistant. And the compression factor is amazing. They're also reasonably priced. They have a unique card system, so you can identify what's in each cube by writing it on the card and then just sticking it in this dedicated window. It's handy and some people would probably love it, but honestly, I'm too lazy for it. That said, if you're packing into a large suitcase or you're sharing that suitcase with somebody else, these cards are the perfect way of identifying what's inside each cube without having to open them all up. And while I do like the compression and the feeling of material and the unique identifying features, they're not breathable and the zippers feel pretty cheap. That said, I've already taken these on a few trips now and abused them duly and they're still going strong. Now, I rarely go on a trip without at least one of these packing cubes made by Knack Bags. I like everything about them, from the oblong shape to the breathable mesh windows to the very sturdy material that helps compress everything super effectively. Knack Bags also makes compressible shoe bags and other handy travel accessories in addition to their signature expandable backpacks, which I created a video review about up here. Knack Bags also offers a variety of sizes of packing cubes, so you can either choose the one or ones you want or go all in on a bundle of cubes and travel accessories. 
Though I will say that the super large size cube is a bit too large for carry-on luggage, according to the reviews. I don't have one, so I can't say for sure. Also, the material is super durable, but it does come at the expense of it being lightweight. Again, it's relatively negligible, but let's just say that these aren't the lightest packing cubes of the bunch. They're also not the cheapest of the bunch, but the compression factor is amazing. The reverse coil zippers are high quality. The material is solid, and I always travel with at least one of these cubes. Now, all the packing cubes you've seen me demonstrate so far are compression packing cubes. That's because I personally prefer compression packing cubes. Because I travel with carry-on luggage most of the time, it's important to me to make the best use of luggage space. And compression packing cubes are the way to do that. However, I want to highlight two other non-compressible packing cubes, each for some unique features that might be interesting or important to you. The Compass Rose Slim Packing Cubes are designed by my friend and travel colleague, Alex of Travel Fashion Girl. She personally told me about her journey of tirelessly going through all the best packing cubes, looking for standout features that she wanted to incorporate, and then the best materials, and then designing and redesigning and tweaking, etc., the perfect packing cube. This is the result of her efforts. Similar to the knack bags cube, I'm a fan of the oblong shape, which makes it easier to either roll items and stuff them in, or to fold items in a way that fills up the cube really nicely. The mesh on top is more breathable than any mesh top I've ever seen, and it still maintains its integrity, which is really important. With a lot of packing cubes that have mesh tops, it's a point of weakness that ends up stretching out, or sometimes even tearing entirely, especially if they're compression packing cubes. But in this case, this mesh is solid. The double zippers are also super solid and large. In fact, Alex designed these packing cubes in such a way that you can use the zippers to close it halfway and really stuff extra items in there without compromising the integrity of the packing cube or the zipper. It's kind of like using a compression cube, but without the extra material and zippers that make a compression packing cube heavier than this. That said, the trade-off for the super durable material and the super durable zippers is that for packing cubes, these are not particularly lightweight. Again, I think it's negligible, but if you are down to the last gram, this is something to take into account. The other unique feature of these packing cubes is that in the set of four, although they're all the same size and only two different colors, they each have numbers on the side, so you can easily identify the contents. That and also, of course, you can see what's inside through the mesh on top. Last up, you won't see these on many, if any, packing cube reviews because they're an accessory designed to fit perfectly inside standard luggage's expandable carry-on backpack, which I review in a separate video. But you don't have to own the backpack to own and appreciate these packing cubes, which convert ingeniously into a hanging travel dresser. It's a super unique set of three packing cubes with mesh tops so you can see what's inside each cube. When you arrive at your destination, the packing cubes attach together with the super strong Velcro tabs on the front and back, and then you can hang them anywhere. This is great for saving space at your destination if there aren't drawers to put your clothes into, and it gives you easy access to your stuff. Now, I have taken these on a few trips, and I do have some observations. First of all, they are heavier and bulkier than most packing cubes because of the extra features that allow them to attach together and to be hung. Also, after a while of using them, if they're hanging, taking stuff out of and putting stuff back into them, I find that the contents of each cube can get a little bit jumbled. So if you're gonna use these packing cubes as a hanging dresser, I suggest you have wrinkle-free clothing that can handle a little bit of jostling. Overall, these are probably the most durable of all the packing cubes here, and they have solid YKK zippers, a lifetime warranty, and a satisfaction guarantee. This is not an extensive or exhaustive list of all the top, top packing cubes out there. Other super popular packing cube brands include Amazon Basics, Gonax, Bag Ale, Eagle Creek, Osprey, eBags, and more. If you'd like to learn more about all of the packing cubes that I showed you in this video, plus all the ones that I just mentioned, then I'll leave a link in the description to an article that's on my website that goes into much more depth and detail about each of these brands and also includes more pro packing tips. If you're as much of a packing nut as I am, then first of all, I'm sorry. <laughs> it's an affliction and I feel your pain. But second of all, you're in good hands because I have a ton of other videos about packing strategies and tools, and I've got lots more to come. 
So please subscribe to my channel and hit the bell to get the updates. You'll also find in the description a link to a free travel gear cheat sheet that I created just for you. It has tips and tricks for choosing the best travel clothes, shoes, luggage, etc., for your needs. And it even includes special discount codes of up to 25% off the things you need. So please sign up for that and I'll catch you next time. I'm Nora Dunn, AKA the Professional Hobo. Ciao.